The CPU ID opcode is a processor supplementary instruction for the x86 architecture allowing software to discover details of the processor. It was introduced by Intel in 1993 when it introduced the Pentium and SL enhanced 486 processors. By using the CPU ID opcode, software can determine processor type and the presence of features. The CPU ID opcode is OFH, OA2H and the value in the EAX register, and in some cases the ECX register, specifies what information to return. History Prior to the general availability of the CPU ID instruction, programmers would write esoteric machine code which exploited minor differences in CPU behavior in order to determine the processor make and model. Outside the x86 family, developers are mostly still required to use esoteric processes to determine the variations in CPU design that are present. While the CPU ID instruction is specific to the x86 architecture, other architectures often provide on-chip registers which can be read to obtain the same sorts of information provided by this instruction. Calling CPU ID, in assembly language the CPU ID instruction takes no parameters as CPU ID implicitly uses the EAX register to determine the main category of information returned. In Intel's more recent terminology, this is called the CPU ID leaf. CPU ID should be called with EAX equals zero first, as this will return in the EAX register the highest EAX calling parameter that the CPU supports. To obtain extended function information CPU ID should be called with the most significant bit of EAX set. To determine the highest extended function calling parameter, call CPU ID with EAX equals 80 million H. CPU ID leaves greater than 3 but less than 80 million are accessible only when the model specific registers have IA32 MISC enable boot NT4, bit 22, equals 0. As the name suggests, Windows NT4 did not boot properly unless this bit was set, but later versions of Windows do not need it, so basic leaves greater than 4 can be assumed visible on current Windows systems. As of July 2014, Basic valid leaves go up to 14 hours, but the information returned by some leaves are not disclosed in publicly available documentation, that is they are reserved. Some of the more recently added leaves also have sub-leaves, which are selected via the ECX register before calling CPU ID. Equals EAX equals zero, highest function parameter equals, here is a list of processors and the highest function supported. Equals EAX equals zero. Get vendor ID equals, this returns the CPU's manufacturer ID string a Euro a 12 character ASCII string stored in EBX, EDX, ECX. The highest basic calling parameter is returned in EAX. The following are known processor manufacturer ID strings, ORM dies better. A Euro early engineering samples of AMD K5 processor, authentic AMD a Euro AMD, Centaur holds a Euro Centaur. Cyrix instead a Euro Cyrix, Genuine Intel a Euro Intel, Transmator CPU a Euro Transmator, Genuine TMX86 a Euro Transmator, Geode by NSC a Euro National Semiconductor, NEX Gen driven a Euro NEX Gen, Rise 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 a Euro Rise, Sys 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 a Euro Sys, UMC 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 a Euro UMC, Via 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 a Euro Via, Vortex 86 Soci a Euro Vortex, the following are known ID strings from virtual machines, KVM 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 a Euro KVM, Microsoft HV a Euro Microsoft Hyper-V or Windows Virtual PC. Vmarevma a Euro VMWARE, Zenvmk Zenvma Euro Zen HVM, for instance, on a genuine Intel processor values returned in EBX a 0x756 E6547. EDX is 0x49656 E69 and ECX is 0x6 C65746E. The following code is written in GNU assembler for the x86-64 architecture and displays the vendor ID string as well as the highest calling parameter that the CPU supports. Equals EAX equals 1, processor info and feature bits equals, this returns the CPU stepping, model and family information in EAX, feature flags in EDX and ECX, 
and additional feature info in EBX. The format of the information in EAX is as follows, 30 a euro stepping, 7 for a euro model, 11 8 a euro family, 13 12 a euro processor type, 19 16 a euro extended model, 27 20 a euro extended family. Intel and AMD have suggested applications to display the family of a CPU as the sum of the family, and the extended family fields shown above, and the model is the sum of the model, and the 4-bit left shifted extended model fields. If family is different than 6 or 15, only the family, and model fields should be used while the extended family, and extended model bits are reserved. If family is set to 15, then extended family and the 4-bit left shifted extended model should be added to the respective base values, and if family is set to 6, then only the 4-bit left shifted extended model should be added to model. The processor info and feature flags are manufacturer specific but usually the Intel values are used by other manufacturers for the sake of compatibility. As of January 2011, the standard Intel feature flags are as follows. Equals EAX equals 2. Cache and TLB descriptor information equals, this returns a list of descriptors indicating cache and TLB capabilities in EAX, EBX, ECX and EDX registers. Equals EAX equals 3, processor serial number equals. This returns the processor serial number. The processor serial number was introduced on Intel Pentium 3, but due to privacy concerns, this feature is no longer implemented on later models. Transmitters Efficient and Crusoe processors also provide this feature. AMD CPUs however, do not implement this feature in any CPU models. For Intel Pentium 3 CPUs, the serial number is returned in EDX, ECX registers. For Transmitter Efficient CPUs, it is returned in EBX, EAX registers. And for Transmitter Crusoe CPUs, it is returned in EBX register only. Note that the processor serial number feature must be enabled in the BIOS setting in order to function. Equals EAX equals 4 and EAX equals BH. Intel thread core and cache topology equals. These two leaves are used for processor topology and cache hierarchy enumeration in Intel multi core processors. As of 2013, Armenian DRAMS does not use these leaves but as alternate ways of doing the core enumeration. Unlike most other CPU ID leaves, leaf BH will return different values in EDX depending on which logical processor the CPU ID instruction runs. The value returned in EDX is actually the X2 API seed of the logical processor. The X2 API seed space is not continuously mapped to logical processors however. There can be gaps in the mapping meaning that some intermediate X2 API seeds don't necessarily correspond to any logical processor. Additional information for mapping the X2 API seeds to cores is provided in the other registers. Although the leaf BH has subleaves, the value returned in EDX is only affected by the core on which the instruction is running but not by the subleaf. The processor, S, topology exposed by leaf BH is a hierarchical one but with a strange caveat that the order of levels in this hierarchy doesn't necessarily correspond the order in the physical hierarchy. However, every logical level can be queried as an ECX subleaf for its correspondence to a level type, which can be either SMT, core, or invalid. The level at space starts at zero and is continuous, meaning that if a level it is invalid, all higher level its will also be invalid. The level type is returned in bits 1508 of ECX, while the number of logical processors at the level queried is returned in EBX. Finally, the connection between these levels and X2 API seeds is returned in EAX, 40, as the number of bits that the X2 API seed must be shifted in order to obtain a unique to the next level. As an example, a dual-core Westmere processor capable of hyperthreading could have X2 API C at 0, 1, 4 and 5 for its four logical processors. Leaf BH, subleaf 0 of CPU ID could for instance return 100H in ECX, meaning that level 0 describes the SMT layer, and return 2 in EBX because there are two logical processors per physical core. 
the value returned in EAX for this zero subleaf should be 1 in this case, because shifting the aforementioned X2 API seeds to the right by one bit gives a unique core number and erases the SMT8 bit inside each core. A simpler way to interpret this information is that the last bit of the X2 API seed identifies the SMT hyperthreading unit inside each core in our example. Advancing to subleaf 1 could for instance return 201H in ECX, meaning that this is a core type level, and 4 in EBX because there are four logical processes in the package. EAX return could be any value greater than 3, because it so happens that bit number 2 is used to identify the core in the X2 API seed. Note that bit number 1 of the X2 API seed is not used in this example. However EAX returned at this level could well be 4 because it also gives a unique id at the package level when shifting the X2 API seed by 4 bits. Finally, you may wonder what the EAX equals 4 leaf can tell us that we didn't find out already. In EAX, 3126, it returns the APIC mask bits reserved for a package. That would be 111B in our example because bits 0 to 2 are used for identifying logical processes inside this package, but bit 1 is also reserved although not used as part of the logical processor identification scheme. In other words, APIC at 0 to 7 are reserved for the package, even though half of these values don't map to a logical processor. The cache hierarchy of the processor is explored by looking at the subleaves of leaf 4. The API seeds are also used in this hierarchy to convey information about how the different levels of cache are shared by the SMT units and cores. To continue our example, the L2 cache, which is shared by SMT units of the same core but not between physical cores on the west mirror is indicated by EAX, 2614, being set to 1 while the information that the L3 cache is shared by the whole package is indicated by setting those bits to 111B. The cache details, including cache type, size, and associativity are communicated via the other registers on LEAF4. Beware that older versions of the Intel App Note 485 contain some misleading information, particularly with respect to identifying and counting cores in a multi-core processor. Errors from misinterpreting this information have even been incorporated in the Microsoft sample code for using CPU ID, even for the 2013 edition of Visual Studio, and also in the sandpile.org page for CPU ID, but the Intel code sample for identifying processor topology has the correct interpretation, and the current Intel software developer Euro Unregistered Trademark S Manual has more clear language. The cross-platform production code from Wildfire Games also implements the correct interpretation of the Intel documentation. Topology detection examples involving older Intel processors that lack X2 APIC are given in a 2010 Intel presentation. Beware that using that older detection method on 2010 and newer Intel processors may overestimate the number of cores and logical processors because the old detection method assumes there are no gaps in the APIC space and this assumption is violated by some newer processors, but these newer processors also come with an X2 APIC, so their topology can be correctly determined using the EAX equals BH leaf method. Equals EAX equals 7, ECX equals 0, extended features equals, this returns extended feature flags in EBX and ECX. Equals EAX equals 80 million H, get highest extended function supported equals, the highest calling parameter is returned in EAX. Equals EAX equals 80 million 1 H, extended processor info and feature bits equals, this returns extended feature flags in EDX and ECX. AMD feature flags are as follows. Equals EAX equals 80 million 2 H, 80 million 3 H, 80 million 4 H, processor brand string equals, these return the processor brand string in EAX, EBX, ECX and EDX. CPU ID must be issued with each parameter in sequence to get the entire 48-byte null terminated ASCII processor brand string. It is necessary to check whether the feature is supported by the CPU by issuing CPU ID with EAX equals 80 million H first and checking if the return value is greater or equal to 80 million for H. 
equals EAX equals 80 million 5H, L1 cache and TLB identifiers equals, this function contains the processor a Euro unregistered trademark SL1 cache and TLB characteristics. Equals EAX equals 80 million 6H, extended L2 cache features equals, returns details of the L2 cache in ECX, including the line size and bytes, type of associativity in the cache size. Equals EAX equals 80 million 7H, advanced power management information equals, this function provides advanced power management feature identifiers. Equals EAX equals 80 million 8H, virtual and physical address sizes equals, returns largest virtual and physical address sizes in EAX. CPU ID usage from high level languages, this information is easy to access from other languages as well. For instance, the C++ code for GCC below prints the first five values, returned by the CPU ID. The equivalent code in C is OR, a generally useful C implementation that works on 32 and 64-bit systems. Microsoft Visual C compiler has built-in function CPU ID so the CPU ID instruction may be embedded without using inline assembly which is handy since the x86-64 version of MSVC does not allow inline assembly at all. The same program for MSVC would be for ball and Embarcadero C compilers, native ASM function calls are necessary, as there is no ASM implementation. The pseudo code. Many interpreted or compiled scripting languages are capable of using CPU ID via an FFI library. One such implementation shows usage of the Ruby FFI module to execute assembly language that includes the CPU ID opcode. CPU specific information outside x86, some of the non x86 CPU architectures also provide certain forms of structured information about the processor's abilities, commonly as a set of special registers. ARM architectures have a CPU ID coprocessor register. The IBM System Z mainframe processors support a store CPU ID instruction since the 1983 IBM 4381 for querying the processor ID. The MIPS32 architecture defines a mandatory processor identification and a series of daisy chained configuration registers. The PowerPC processor has the 32 bit read only PVR register identifying the processor model in use. DSP and transputer like chip families have not taken up the instruction in any noticeable way, in spite of having as many variations in design. Alternate ways of silicon identification might be present. For example, DSPs from Texas Instruments contain a memory based register set for each functional unit that starts with identifiers determining the unit type and model, its ASIC design revision and features selected at the design phase and continues with unit-specific control and data registers. Access to these areas is performed by simply using the existing load and store instructions. Thus, for such devices there is no need for extending the register set for the device identification purposes. See also, CPU-Z, a Windows utility that uses CPU ID to identify various system settings. References External links According to this note, the former Intel App Note 485, which was specifically about CPU ID, is now incorporated in the Intel Registered Trademark 64 and IA32 Architectures Software Developer Euro Unregistered Trademark S Manual. As of July 2014, the manual, however, still directs the reader to the App Note 485 for further information. The latest published version of the App Note 485 dating to May 2012, is available via archive.org. App Note 485 contains some information that can be and was easily misinterpreted though, particularly with respect to processor topology identification. The big Intel manuals tend to lag behind the Intel ISA document, available at the top of this page, which is updated even for processors not yet publicly available, and thus usually contains more CPU ID bits. For example, as of this writing the ISA book documents the Kofla shopped bit in Leaf 7, but the big manuals although apparently more up to date don't mention it.